Hey all, and welcome to the Brocade Campus Feature Explainer Series. I'm Terry Henry. Uh, this time around, we're going to look at web authentication, also known as Captive Portal um, or Browser Hijack. It's known as many names, but you've all used this before when you check into a hotel um, and you connect to the Wi-Fi or you connect to the wired network. It's going to, you know, do a browser hijack, pull up a web page on your browser, and have you log in with a username and password, or maybe a passcode or uh, maybe just click a box to say, I agree to the terms and conditions of the network, but nonetheless, you need to do something before you're allowed to connect to the network. And so you don't need to go to the user machines and set up a proxy. It's gonna do that automatically. It's automatically gonna redirect that browser instance. Um, and so we can do that with a built-in web browser on the switch. And in a future episode, we will look at how to customize that web page. So how to change the logo, how to change the terms and conditions, to rename the, the login button, etc., uh, to make it customized for you. But for this, uh, in this episode, we're just going to talk about the basic uh, functionality to get this up and running. So we'll hop over to our 7250, uh, go into config T. Now, web authentication is configured on the VLAN. So in order for this to work, uh, first we have to have a VLAN configured. We have to have a VE, assuming you're running layer three code, you have to have a VE on that VLAN and an IP address signed to the VE. If you're running layer two code, you need an IP address on the box, but you need some kind of IP address so that the um, users can connect to that web server. So uh, we're in config T here. We're gonna go into VLAN one, which is where I'm gonna assign it to. Uh, and then there's a, um, a context, a subcontext under web auth. Um, so we're now in the web auth context. And so within web auth, we can do many, many things. Um, there is, you know, a multitude of options here. Um, redirect addresses, you can change many filter uh, uh, timers. Um, authentication mode, etc. Uh, but we need to do a few things to get this up and running. So one, you need to decide whether you want uh, secured access or not. So HTTPS or HTTP. Um, HTTPS requires you to generate a certificate or upload a certificate, um, as well as if you don't want the warning messages, you're going to need to rename the, the web page. So in this case, we're just going to use non-secure. It's secure by default. So we'll do a no uh, secure login. Okay, um, then uh, we need to set a trust port. So, so often you don't, but in this particular case, I have my uplinks on this VLAN. So I'm gonna trust my uplinks because I don't want my everything on the uplink to have to authenticate into this switch, right? So we do a trust port and you could do a range of ports, but I'm only gonna do one in this case. So one, one, uh, sorry, E115 is my trust port. Okay. Um, and then authentication mode. So, uh, so if we do an auth mode, so auth mode shows me a few things. I have a captive portal. So if I'm using an external captive portal server, um, if I'm doing no authentication, so none doesn't mean that, that there's no authentication. It means it's going to show you a button that says, you know, log in or I agree after you read the terms and conditions or something, but it's just a button that you just got to click and then it gives you access. Um, passcode is either a static passcode that you've configured or it could do a dynamic passcode so it will automatically change that passcode on a scheduled interval by default I believe it's 24 hours um, and uh, and so you just give out that passcode you know at reception or, or whatever the case um, you could do a static passcode you can do up to 16 characters in the passcode but it's uh, defaults to four and lastly, username and password. So, you, so that is the username and password is the default out of the box, and it uses Radius by default. So, in order to make that work, you obviously need to set up your Radius server, um, and then have the user accounts on the Radius server. Um, uh, you can just do. You can also do a local username and password file or database, if you will, um, and have them have them authenticate locally or have them authenticate by radius. And if the radius server is unavailable, then do a local username and password either way. But in this case, we're actually going to use a passcode and I'm going to dynamically generate passcode. So that's pretty simple to do. You just do an auth mode and then, uh, and under auth mode, we just do a passcode here. 
And so just hitting enter is going to going to put it into dynamic mode. Now we can do multiple things. We can generate it. We can flush expired. We can do a grace period, length, log, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, but we're just going to hit enter, and so we do a default passcode. So lastly, I just need to enable it, and I'm good. So we do enable, um, and that's so it should now be working. So if we do a show um, web auth here. So it shows me web authentication for VLAN one is enabled. Uh, here's my maximum attempts, my block duration, cycle time, etc. Um, what else do we need to know here? Uh, so, so it's using passcode. The passcode length is four, which is default. The grace period five minutes. Um, uh, there's the refresh period, etc. It also shows me that it's it's generated, it's dynamically generated this passcode of one up. Uh, of 7406 and uh, and so that will be useful for the next 24 hours and then it will dynamically generate a new one um, and so it's going to actually send that out in a syslog message in an SNMP trap uh, so you'll know what it is so we can see it this way through this uh, show web auth command we can also see it through uh, show log and it will send it an SMMP trap with that. So if you have an application to receive it, um, then you can you can customize that to, to have that update something on a scheduled basis. Um, what else do we see? Trusted port 115 here is configured. Um, secure logon is disabled. By default, it's enabled. Uh, and then um, there's customizations you can do to that web page. So we will talk about that in a future episode on how to customize each one of those things like logo and header and, and, and stuff like that. Um, you can also see your statistics down here. So uh, number that are authenticated, uh, uh, dynamically and statically blocked, uh, dynamically and statically, and number of hosts currently authenticating. So right now there's nobody. Um, so if I take my laptop here, and I unplug it and plug it in, and then pull up a browser, we should um, have that hit the authentication page in a second. And going back over here, we should see a device authenticating. So there's now two hosts trying to authenticate since I enabled it. All right, and then, um, Look back. So here's my passcode page, right? So this is the default passcode page. Nothing's been customized on it. This is just the, the web uh, server out of the box. Um, but all I need to do here is type in my passcode, which they gave me, 7406. I hit login, and it now says, can to close that? Uh, it now says, you know, my login was successful. Keep this window open for logout. You know, uh, click here to go to your original location. Um, you'll remain logged in for um, whatever that, or until, sorry, until 2 p.m. on the uh, on the 23rd. Um, and then if you want to log off, you can do it here. So again, I can customize this page, not everything on this logout page, but I can, I can customize quite a bit and that's in a future episode. So, um, so looking at that, if I rerun this, show web auth, I now see that I have a dynamically authenticated host and I have another host, something else plugged into my network that's currently not authenticated. Um, I can also do a show web auth uh, and I can look at the allowed list, at the authenticating list, so who's in the middle of authenticating, who's blocked, so who's failed, and I can look at it for a particular web page. So we can look at allowed, for example, and allowed is going to show me um, here's my MAC address, username. If I was using username and password, it would tell me who it is, but I'm not. I'm using passcode. Um, it's dynamically configured, um, how long it's, uh, the authentication, the authenticated duration is. And I can also assign dynamic ACLs to the port, which is pretty cool, but outside the scope of this video. Um, and then you could do a clear on that, of course. So you can clear, um, sorry. From you can clear uh, for for a particular VLAN um, the authenticated max or the block max. So if you wanted to clear all the authenticated max or the block max, you could certainly do that and have those restart. But um, anyway, that's the basics of that. There's obviously many many options. You should refer to the manual. And uh, in an upcoming episode, we'll talk about customizing that web page. All right, that's it for today, and thanks for.